what is atrial fibrillation and will it kill me? And we've got some cows that also want to learn today. So in a normal heart, you have your atria and your ventricles, and there is a very specific way that the electrical impulses go through your heart from the atria down into your ventricles, and it helps the atria contract. So the blood goes from the atria into the ventricles, and from the ventricles, it goes either to your lungs or to the rest of your body. Now, in atrial fibrillation, there are aberrant electrical pathways that they're that are just firing randomly. That means that your atria are just kind of flapping around. And some of these electrical impulses will go through to the ventricle. And that means that someone can have an irregularly irregular heartbeat. In some cases, it can be very, very fast. And we want to try and keep, get, we want to get that down. A normal heart rate is between 60 and 100. With someone with AF, we typically aim for a heart rate around 70. Now, when the atria are kind of just flapping around, it means that you can get turbulent blood flow in the atria and that means that small blood clots can form. And if small blood clots form, then those blood clots can move around to other parts of the body. And the thing that we usually worry about is that it can lead to a stroke. So when someone is newly diagnosed with AF, we want to understand, are they stable or unstable with it? And we can give them medication to try and slow down their heart rate. We might do medication or give them a, an electric shock to the heart to try and flip their heart out of that rhythm. We might even start thinking about um, burning part of their heart to try and stop these random um, electrical impulses from firing. But generally, we will um, give someone a blood thinner. But before we give them a blood thinner, we want to assess their risk to see how likely they are to have something like a stroke based on their age, their sex, whether they have vascular disease, whether they have diabetes, whether they have heart failure, things like that. And then we also assess their risk for how likely they are to bleed if they are on a blood thinner. And then we weigh up the pros and cons and then we kind of suggest it to the patient. And we, you might start someone on a blood thinner. If they're really young, no other health problems, we might not start them on a blood thinner, but it's all dependent on the individual.